Raji Fashola announced government's approval while briefing newsmen after the Federal Executive Council meeting. The minister, he said, with the approval, the procurement and implementation defects in respect of the project started in 2009, as well as the lack of budget support, will now be fully addressed. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that the council also briefed the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, on the progress of the rollout plan of the National Social Investment Program, for which 500 billion naira was set aside in the budget. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives is to invite the Inspector General of Police over the killing of a former footballer of the Shooting Star Sports Club, Izu Joseph, in Bielsa State. Members also resolved to investigate other extrajudicial killings in Nigeria. Ignatius Mkwa completes the story from the National Assembly. Uh, this is the only motion that came under matter of forging public importance uh, in today's plenary, and that came from Representative Diri Doye from Bayelsa State. Well, in an, in an emotion laden voice, members decried the incident uh, cases of extrajudicial killing in parts of Nigeria, especially uh, in Bayelsa State in the last two weeks. And one of them is the killing of a, a former football player with a true SF. Chairman, Senate Committee on Water Resources. Mohamed Ubali Shitu has called for the quick passage of the Water Resources Bill sent to the National Assembly to fast track development in the water sector. This was during an oversight visit to the ministry and its agencies in Abuja. National Assembly correspondent Ifain Izumba reports. The committee visited the Nigerian Water Resources Management Commission, the Gurara Water Management Authority, the Nigerian Hydrological Agency and the Ministry of Water Resources. Senator Obani stressed that if Nigerians join hands together, the nation will succeed in spite of the dwindling economy. We carry out an oversight function with a view to ensuring that the government ministries, department agencies. The report. Shedda Science and Technology Complex houses advanced chemistry, physics, and biological research centers where scientists carry out research activities. Members of the Senate Committee are worried that the complex could be underutilized if its functions and research programs cannot impact positively on the society. Everywhere in the world, science and technology innovation is indispensable in terms of economic development. And this is a time for us now to demonstrate the political will to fund science and technology. Director General of the complex, Professor Sunday Thomas, provided a background information on the complex and their operational methodology. You know, in science and technology, you just don't want to jump to the press unless you're very sure of what you're doing. You've tried it several times. You've checked it uh, against standards, against anything that exists already. And so we're really working on publicity. For the Sequel Cell project, already we have uh, done with the laboratory and we're trying to go to the clinical uh, stage of the study so that uh, the drug can be readily available to those who uh, suffer from Sequel Cell uh, issues in the current admission system in Nigeria. My appeal is to the other legs, those who are the House of Representatives and to the President, that when you look at the issue of three years, it will do more harm to the students than good. Similarly, the decision to discontinue the use of scratch card is designed to provide better services for candidates. Uh, a person who wants to obtain services from JAM should be able to do that from his bedroom or his office without having to go and buy anything. You pay directly to TSA through your mobile app. Professor Oloyede promised that key players in the education sector will be carried along in all the decisions of the board. 
So now, Jam says it will continue to push reforms that will protect the interest of millions of Nigerian students who seek admission into Nigeria tertiary education institutions every year. From Jam headquarters, Buari, Franka Uzoma Olua, NTN News. And with growing instability and agitation in the Niger Delta, affected groups were not shy in voicing their thoughts on the way forward for the region. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye reports that they were speaking at a public hearing on a bill for an act to establish the presidential. It's large, unwieldy, not properly defined. This bill should contain uh, a provision for compensation for peace. The chairman of the House Committee on Niger Delta Affairs, Essien Ekbeong, appreciates the submissions, saying they will be factored into modifications of the bill. I believe this bill will holistically look at this and show that by the time it is signed into law and it becomes professional, we will be able to solve this problem once and for all. The presidential amnesty program came into being in 2009 and was accompanied with support and training of ex-militants. From the National Assembly, Dennis Adignluye, NTA News. The need for capacity development to deal with the challenges presented by oil spills has again been emphasized. Minister of Environment Amina Mohamed reiterated this in a message to a national workshop on oil spill trajectory modeling in mar marine environment organized by the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency. Joseph Johnson completes the report. In Nigeria, there is a somewhat growing level of oil spill incidents. And with the increased interest of oil industry operators to pursue exploration and production in the deep offshore, participants in this workshop are strategizing on ways. Saze Uzi started this in Abuja while interacting with a coalition of civil society organizations. Timothy Yusuf reports. The meeting convened by the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations was premised on recent developments surrounding the forthcoming Undo State Governorship election. Executive Director of Partners for Election Reforms, Mseze Nwangwagu, says there is the need for caution on the part of stakeholders in the Undo State Governorship election to forestall breakdown of law and order. His view was corroborated by other members of the civil society organizations. The civil society must begin to wake up to say, look, election is about what? The people. We should all be concerned. And as Nigerians, we are concerned. The director of voter education and publicity of INEC assured them that the commission will not be stampeded into condoning any form of illegality before, during, and after the election. We very much appreciate the hand of friendship. We very much appreciate engaging with CSOs. It's in the belief that government alone, INEC alone, cannot guarantee cannot undertake successful elections without the co cooperation and collaboration of all stakeholders in the process. The Undo State Governorship election comes up on the 26th of November this year. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. And Nigerians urge to embrace arbitration. These and more reports as we join Abdullahi in our Lagos Network Center. Good afternoon to you. Then how do we now get be compensated? And if anything happens, it is the duty of the employers to get them involved. And then the workers will also be compensated adequately. Giving an overview of the Employees' Compensation Act, the Managing Director, Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund, who was represented, highlighted some of the benefits both the employers of labor and employees stand to gain by keying into the trust fund. Compensation is, uh, is long-term. For example, in case of fatality and you have dependents, the children will be supported until the last one is 21 or out of university. The workshop was organized by the Nigerian Labor Congress Lagos State Council in collaboration with the Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund in Lagos. Ken Ibeluge, NTA News.
The Nigerian business community and commercial venture operators have been challenged to explore the benefits of alternative dispute resolution in resolving cases instead of the conventional court system. The president of the Lagos Court of Arbitration, Yemi Johnson, said this at the media roundtable in Lagos. Tunde Saiki reports. Arbitration has become a major and strategic way of resolving business disagreements across the world for its obvious advantages. It reduces cost of litigation, saves time, and encourages consensus building and promote healthy business relationships, contrary to bitter feuds of litigation in normal courts. The need for a vibrant and efficient alternative dispute resolution platform on the Federal Executive Council meeting where we told you that the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing has been given the go-ahead to ensure the completion of the Kaduna power plant with a view to adding 215 megawatts of electricity to the national grid. The Minister Babatunde Raji Fashola announced government's approval while briefing newsmen after the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. He said with the approval, the procurement and implementation defects in respect of the project started in 2009, as well as the lack of budget support, will now be fully addressed. We are now in a position that we can complete this program and project by next year and add 215 megawatts of power to the grid and particularly dedicate some of that power to Kudenda and Kaduna to support the uh, industrial complex there. The second project was the construction of the substation to evacuate power from the Burara hydroelectric power plant, phase one, to evacuate 40 megawatts of power there. And uh, again, there had to be extra work done here in order to connect that original evacuation plan into Kaduna now, and also into, to enable it interconnect To health matters now. Nigerians are assured of quality health service delivery, especially with the reforms in the National Health Insurance Scheme targeted at universal health coverage. Talatu Ezirike reports that this was a position of discussions on NTA's current affairs program, Tuesday Live. Social health insurance, a global practice, fully began in Nigeria with the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHRS, in 2005. The scheme, many say, is faced with challenges that include corruption and sharp practices, especially by some health maintenance organizations and service providers that should change subscribers. Development being tackled and the scheme expanded to meet the health needs of Nigerians at both the urban and rural areas. No HMO who is engaged in sharp practices is going to be spared. No healthcare facility that is engaged in sharp practices is going to be spared. These HMOs are going to be reaccredited, mm. and those who do not meet the reaccreditation requirements. They are going to be delisted. Enrollees will be treated by the providers. And any enrollee that believes is not getting the correct service, all he needs to do is call the HMO. It's part of the scheme because we are there to be the watchdog. For others, the need for sincerity of purpose, proper enlightenment, and protection of subscribers to get it right. When we started, NHS enrollees were darlings of facilities. But these days, you are treated with scum. The law requires that money that is given to, uh, to HMO, they should make continuous periodic returns. How far has that been discharged? And it is at the cost of making profit that the trouble arises. There shouldn't be a negotiation as to how much you should pay. There has, there has to be, for this disease or for this treatment, this is the charge. Analysts say the overall goal of the National Health Insurance Scheme is the provision of quality, accessible and affordable health care for Nigerians. It is expected that more states key into the scheme. Tell that is 
this basic health fund is supposed to be administered in the following ratio. 50% to NHIS, who will now use it to supervise the poor, the aged, the children below five. Then, 45% is supposed to be given to the primary health care. 15% in the 2017 federal budget dedicated to health care and then greater value for money in terms of expenditure of resources. Those are the basic things that we are asking for. In Abuja, Chimde Martin DBC, NTA News. And now to agriculture. Empowering farmers' cooperatives and incentivizing agricultural productions as some of the imperatives for Nigeria towards ensuring national food security. Guest on NTA's current affairs program, Good Morning Nigeria re echoed the need for the country to move away from food import dependency towards a more functional agricultural alternative. That report will come in our subsequent report, in our subsequent bulletins. You can, however, watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. It's nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Time to take some messages. More reports shortly. You know that importing consumables and domestic products kill local manufacturing and negatively affect the growth of the economy? That some imported products are dangerous to your health? That building factories can generate massive employment and grow the economy? Buying locally made products and services means investing back in the economy. Thousands of Nigerians are innovative and can take Nigeria to the next level. Growing the economy starts with you and I. Raise the standard. Grow the economy. Buy Made in Nigeria. Now, you can hold that dream occasion without stress. Horizon Caterers will provide answers to all your kitchen questions. Exquisite hall designs, mouth-watering and nourishing local and to Friday, 11th November 2016, at the Eco Hotel and Suites, Victoria Island, Lagos. For exhibition in partnership, log on to www.lagosinternationaltradefair.com to download your application for the B2B Expo or dial our hotline at 0803 911 LITF 2016, positioning the Nigerian economy for diversification and sustainable growth. Who are you and what is your predicament? Please, I'm looking for Candy. Who is living here? In this compound? Oh no, this is a premises. The compound is an amalgam of chemicals. And there is no candy living in this premises. This week on your award-winning comedy series, Professor John Boo, starring Kanayo Okanayo, Messi Johnson, Queen Wokoye, Funky Malam, Bimbo Akintola, Ime Bishop, Yomi Fash Lanso, MC For God. Who was you? What was you found? Eh? Auntie, I look at you. I going to do for my sister. I know you are for. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know. He was found the place. Call me. Okay? Somebody. She's definitely not my sister. Shut up! I'll see you, Professor John Bull, fasting your seatbelts this Tuesday and Friday, 8.30 to 9 p.m. on NTA Network, International and Star Times. It's absolutely <laughs> bombastic. Over and out. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data.
We intend to radically change Newman Street. My company has a track record of converting slums into new cities. Many years of experience has taught us to fish out allies within the communities we want to transform. Don't listen to your husband. Listen to me. Give me a boy. And the two of you may never even have to work again. What's your name? Akpos. I'm America. America. Oh, Akpos, America. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Love, Love it too. too. Okay. Wonderful, oh. wonder. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thanks for rejoining us on Nationwide. Federal government restates commitment towards developing arts. Agatha is our guide from Benin. It's over to you. Many thanks, Hawa. Good afternoon and welcome to Benin. The federal government is to explore private public private partnership in developing the cultural potentials in the Benin Kingdom for economic development. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, stated this in an interview with NTA News. Elizabeth Woodwoma reports. The coronation of the Arbor of Benin was an opportunity to showcase the rich Benin culture. The Arbor of Benin, a warrior the second in a speech, also reiterated the need for cultural diplomacy for economic development. This, the minister said, is in line with the federal government agenda. We look at Benin as the magnet, as the hub of the creative industry. And what we are doing to promote the creative industry in Nigeria is going to help not just, you know, Benin, but the entire, you know, creative industry. To be able to best practices. AIG AK stated this at his polling out parade held at the Samuel Bermuda Stadium in Benin. Muhammad Abdul Kadri reports. Inspector General of Police Isaac AK, who put in 32 years in service while advising young officers and men in the force to maintain discipline and dedication to duty, said all Nigerians should support the service for effective policing. Uh, success in the police is always born out of foundational key values. Self-contentment, discipline, belief in God, and dedication to duty. Secretary to Edo State Government, who represented the governor, said the retired AIG left behind what he called an indelible footprint on the sands of time in community policing. The Commissioner of Police, Delta and Edo State described the retired AIG as gentleman officer. The AIG Isaac A.K. retired, started his career in 1984 as Cadet ASP at the prestigious Police Staff College in Benin, Edo State, Mohammed Abdel Kadi, NTA News. And that's our package. How are it's back to you for the rest of News Nationwide? Good afternoon. Thanks, Agatha. And the power challenge in Nigeria can be a thing of the past if the nation's young inventors are further encouraged. Glory Ekanim at the NTA ETV Expo reports that a multi-purpose agriculture and heat converter machine with the, has the ability to generate electricity was presented. Young inventors are now coming out with inventions that are capable of improving the nation's power challenge. At the ongoing NTA ETV Expo, Lawal Ruth and Sheidu Abdubasset both students of Abibat Mogaji Millennium Secondary School, Gege Lagos, say it is possible to generate electricity, cooking gas, and fertilizer from cow dung in their design of a 40 liter bow digester with the capacity to generate about 1 kg of dry methane gas. And it can also be converted into fuel. You know, a lot today we are having challenges with fuel, so this cow dung can actually do it. 
To Shaido, it is a solution for farmers to improve on their produce because it can also generate about 10 kg of NPK fertilizer. From ordinary and organic waste that is even causing pollution in our community, we are able to successfully generate electricity and fertilizer from there, which can improve the economy of any nation and also generate revenue for the government. But at this point, I want federal government to come to their head, give them the technical know-how, train them, establish them and uh, let them go so that the issue of energy, the issue of fertilizer will be something in the past. The four-day event is a convergence of Nigeria's young inventors to stimulate technology and spur creativity among the children and youths. In Abuja, Gloria Kanem, NTA News. Thanks, Glory. And a girl who was 10 in 2015 when the Sustainable Development Goals were endorsed by the global community will be 25 when the goals are to be achieved. Will she be left behind? This is among questions raised in Abuja at the official launch of the 2016 State of the World Population Report by the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA. Lydia Bassi completes the report. Today's over 60 million 10-year-old girls represent a challenge and an opportunity for the global community. The 15-year plan of United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development promises to help transform the futures of millions of 10-year-old girls who have traditionally been left behind. Chairman, National Population Commission, represented by Honorable Commissioner, NPC, Mohammed Yusuf Anka, said governments at all levels must develop and implement strong policies in favor of the girl child. I want to see this opportunity to appeal to states who are yet to domesticate the Child Rights Act to urgently do so. Equal opportunities, just like the male child, to be able to get to her. To, uh, to be able to achieve her highest potential. Data from the United Nations Population Fund show that Nigeria has one of the highest child marriage prevalence cases in the world, with 1,993,000 women married before age 18. We should need, need to use that to be able to track progress of the girl child, including access to sexual and reproductive health services. If all the girls are educated, free of charge to secondary school level, this country will benefit enormously. Theme of the event is investing in supporting 10-year-old girls. What is at stake? Lydia Bassi, NTA News. And our Ibado Network Center is where we go next. Kemi is our guide. It's over to you, Kemi. Thank you, Howard. Good afternoon and welcome to Ibado. The federal government has reiterated commitment towards propagation of right policies and programs that will encourage private investors in agriculture to enhance economic diversification. Minister of State for Agriculture, Enikin Lopobiri, stated this in Ogun State during a tour of some plantations in Odobolu local government area. Lekwagmode reports. The visit, according to the Minister of State for Agriculture, was a demonstration of the Ministry's commitment to ensuring that agriculture maintains its pivotal role in the nation's drive to revive its economy. It was on to have oil palm plantations, a private initiative, an experience it described as encouragement to agricultural sector in the country. The minister noted that through exploration of value chains, maximizing areas of comparative advantages in agriculture aided by workable policies, Nigeria's economy will be right back on track. So the ministry is thinking about engaging them so that we can, together with them, fashion out, you know, new policies that will, you know, um, uh, sustainably grow value chain. To the farmers, government must create an enabling environment for farmers and other agreed. They engage us and we are the people on the field. We are the ones who know what the problems are, what is needed. When you engage us, then we can formulate those policies together and improve the business of agri. So in all the uh, agri sectors, there is need for mechanized assistance from the government. The minister assured that the visit will be a continuous one across the country to ensure that agriculture is giving priority attention in the nation's economy. 
in Abeokuta, Lekon Agbonde, NTA News. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has called for the support of Nigerians in its bid to fight corruption to the barest minimum. Southwest Zonal Head, EFCC, Zine Akani Yene, made the call at a press briefing in Ibado. Kemioshi has details. While addressing journalists, the Southwest Zonal Head, Mr. Akani Yene, said opening of the Ibado Zonal Office since January 2016 has given a boost to the activities of the Commission in line with the anti-corruption vision of the federal government. The Zonal Head noted that between the period of January and September, the Ibadan office has received over 200 petitions, with about 123 of them under investigation. He also said that about eight cases are before the courts. Six vehicles have been seized from suspected fosters, and about 0.571 million naira have been recovered. For the record, this office is not limited to only corruption cases. We are also looking very, very seriously at issues of advancement fraud. And we have made a lot of good things in getting at some of these advancement forces. Mr. Kani Yene added that the Commission can, however, do more with the support of the public and other stakeholders. I am inviting members of the public and the media to prop up this effort by reporting cases of corruption to the Commission. The Badozonal Office covers the activities of the Commission in Oyo, Oshun, Ogun, Ondo, and Ekite states. In Ibadan, Kemioshi, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. It's back to you, Hawa, for the rest of the news. Thanks, Kemi. And the Oni of Ife, Oba Adeyeye Eniton Ogunwusi, has stressed the need for the Nigerian nation to give special attention to local languages as their extinction will hamper growth and social cohesion. Speaking at a public presentation of a book, The Ancient Wisdom, Yoruba Proverbs, the Oni said any nation that does not encourage the speaking of its languages is hampering its development. Other speakers, including Mrs. Omotai Omotosho, commended the author and encouraged the use of Nigerian languages in schools. Let us encourage our children to speak their own dialect in what we call Yoruba, Ediabini Biwa. 87 page book promoting Yoruba proverbs was written by Olale Kong Fabi Lola, a computer analyst. Time to take another break. It's nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Do you know that importing consumables and domestic products kill local manufacturing and negatively affect the growth of the economy? That some imported products are dangerous to your health? That building factories can generate massive employment and grow the economy? Buying locally made products and services means investing back in the economy. Thousands of Nigerians are innovative and can take Nigeria to the next level. Growing the economy starts with you and I. Raise the standard. Grow the economy. Buy Made in Nigeria. Now, you can hold that dream occasion without stress. Horizon Caterers will provide answers to all your catering questions. Exquisite hall designs, mouth-watering and nourishing local and continental cuisine. Suitable for all types of ceremonies, including weddings, AGMs, business luncheon, cocktails. Name it, we can bring it. Our chefs and executive waiters give your guests that unforgettable experience in service. Our service covers all states of the Federation. Call us today to book your locations. 0805-502-9637-0803-450-9726-0909-9708-111. Horizon Caterers. Experience catering beyond the horizon. Thanks for rejoining us. Philippines wants United States troops to leave its shores, possibly within two years. 
Sequel to concerns amongst NATO allies, Russia withdraws requests for warships to refuel in Spain. For more reports from the world, of world scene, let's join Ronke Kolawole on Global Tech Bates. Gambia has joined the League of Some African Nations to quit the International Criminal Court, ICC, on the premise that the court humiliates African countries. Meanwhile, Botswana has advised that African states unhappy with ICC should work to reform it from within instead of pulling out. Still in Africa, 145 children have been released by the armed group in South Sudan. The children had been part of the main rebel group in the country. In the meantime, Ethiopian troops have withdrawn from parts of southern Somalia where they were positioned to fight Al-Shabaab militants. This has made some residents to flee out of the fear that the terrorists could return and take over the area. In France, the clearance of the jungle, the migrant camp in Calais, is over. Meanwhile, fire rages on in parts of the camp and nobody has been able to ascertain who set the camp on fire overnight. On health matters, scientists are planning to release an army of millions of modified mosquitoes in areas of Brazil and Colombia as a device to provide revolutionary protection against mosquito-borne diseases like Zika. For Global Tidbits, Runke Kolawoli, NT News. Sports now. Ministry of Interior Games kicks off in Kaduna a squash grassroots talent hunt is attended by 20 athletes from five states of North Central Zone. Amanzi Marcus completes the report. The Ministry of Interior Games enters Day 3 on Thursday in Kaduna. At the opening on Tuesday, Kaduna State Deputy Governor Barnabas Bala, who represented President Muhammad Buhari, said the federal government will continue to promote sport. President of Nigeria Squash Federation, Adamu Arena, encouraged the students to be serious in both sports and education to enable them to reap bountiful dividends in future. With sports update, Amanzi Marcus, NTA News. And just before we go, a reminder that you can get all our story and stories and much more when you log on to our website www.nta.ng And that's Nationwide this Wednesday. We thank you for being part of it. Stay on the network service for more reports and news extra at 9. Good evening. Can the